back. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Alexandra, it was wonderful speaking to you in that session, mediated experiences. And I, of course, people should watch that and the work that you're doing, which you're going to tell us about. So thank you very much <laughs> for being part of this symposium. Now it is a little bit about yourself. Then I'll talk a little bit about the work I'm doing, where they can find information, and then we'll go into the topic. So please, Alexandra, about yourself. Okay, a few words about myself. So first of all, thanks for inviting me, Vikram. It's always a nice uh, uh, exchange we, we have. So uh, uh, thanks for having the opportunity to repeat. <laughs> um, uh, so I am... Uh, a mediator, and I think as with uh, each mediator, have a uh, different funny uh, experience be behind them. So my, I am an engineer by education, and I've been working on international projects, uh, engineering projects uh, for the most part of my uh, life. But I realized as a project manager, what I like is how to bring people together in somehow a nice atmosphere <laughs> to the goal we, we need. So this is how I, I, I got uh, interested uh, in uh, mediation and and what makes people can understand each other and work to, together and overcome some difficulties. Um, uh, yeah, that's so why I'm trying to, to develop this uh, this art, I would say, because I think it's an art. We need a lot of patience to, <laughs> to, to become a better <laughs> practitioner. Uh, and at the moment I am practicing <laughs> uh, on the field in Poland, I, I am working with an NGO uh, here in Poland next to the border uh, of Ukraine. And uh, and we help the refugees that are crossing the border uh, fleeing from, from war. So not only because in fact, uh, you have all kinds of people crossing the border. So it's kind of interesting. And so in this NGO I am with, we are uh, working with uh, on two Russia reception center sorry and with other activities like you know some cash uh, programming cash support for for the, the families trying to settle in the region or with some uh, protection uh, case uh, worker work you know to, to provide some help for the everyday life of the people remaining in the in the region uh, yeah so this that's, is what I'm doing. Well, that's wonderful yeah. work that you're doing. And like I said, that, that episode of Mediator Experiences is lying on the YouTube channel. So please search Mediator Vikram and Alexandra. You'll find that session. So I what I'll do is I'll just take what maybe one minute to go through a little bit about where to find information because I have to do it at every time because people I'm telling you to don't know what all is happening and a lot of a lot of stuff happens. A <laughs> so, lot of, exactly. This is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so mediatorvikram.com, you'll find some basic information. So this is currently, like I said, this is current situation. I'm uh, according to me, two more people will get added to this which I just got today, I got a message from them, which is interesting that those people, of course, are very interesting. So that will get added here. And of course, connecting posts. Look, a problem, Alexandra, is that these the social media posts are only shown to a few people. So that's how social media works. So that's why I just want some place where people can go and actually get information. So what I did was on LinkedIn, I there's a newsletter that I started. And I've put out, started putting details there where, say for the whole, like this symposium, one newsletter has all the details. So mm -hmm. people can actually go to that newsletter and see the symposium and see all the sessions, YouTube links, everything is there. So that's, I'm trying to make it simple, whatever way I can. But Alexander, the World Mediation Circle is important, right? Did they, I don't know whether you read about it. Did you read anything about it? I talked about it with you, but yeah. I'm sorry, I had no time to update myself. I, I, it's bad. I know it's bad. So please, please do explain to everyone, starting with me, with uh, <laughs> with the whole thing again. Thank you for your patience. Yeah. And, <laughs> look, look, I tell you, the idea was that, of course, one is you can go out and say mediation is very good and you must use it. And very nice. That's a good thing. But finally, to get people to use it and actually participate in a collaborative process we have to do one more step which is actually like i call this a grassroots movement where we actually set up a circle in a school in a community in an organization and say look we're setting up this circle whoever feels that they want to resolve disputes in a collaborative manner and amicable manner become a part of it so you know i i mean as i go along i'll tell you basically the idea is that three kinds of the people, the mediator, the peacemaker, and the participants. And why I keep the role of the peacemaker important is it's an important role because someone has to bring people 
in together because mediator has the skill of actually assisting you in resolving a dispute but if people don't come together that the mediator definitely can't help you <laughs> so <laughs> and some people have the skill look a mediator can also have that skill i'm not saying it is exclusive to certain other people a mediator can be a peacemaker in that sense but some people only have that skill but might not have the mediator skill because sometimes i feel that both the terms get for me i mean the way i look at peacemakers i think both the terms get mixed that it is a peacemaker is bringing to people together and assisting you to resolve your dispute i felt that we need to divide this two categories so that's the kind of thing we put it out there and these are people within those communities the children within the schools we are just asking them to identify those people the people with the mediator mindset with the peacemaker my mindset and those people who want to pass to participate in the process so they are doing it i mean we i am saying that we don't have to go there and say oh we are going to teach you how to resolve your dispute no they know <laughs> it's just bringing the right people out the outside so that's what the circles are going to be so alexandra is going to help set up a france mediation circle a poland mediation circle <laughs> <laughs> so, Ukrainian one, <laughs> Ukrainian one. So this is what we are going to keep. We'll do. We'll start on a small level. We'll get a few people together. Then it'll grow. We'll grow. We don't. We're not in so much of a hurry. I mean, of course, we it should happen as fast as it can. But we'll take it. It can take its time. So that's how I'm taking it. Now the only thing was the look. The idea being that one, of course, everything is out there for free. Nothing comes out of it. So what I said was how become a patron. patron i put out small little values to it okay okay you can become a patron for that but at least something to take the process through because of course my time is one thing but we have to reach out to a lot of people so that's how i felt maybe some funding will happen so i did put a little funding thing and people benefit by i mean participate i mean have interactions networking collaborations all that so that's basically the circle and of course a lot of events and all that keep happening the information will come on keep coming up here on this shows and events and because there are more than 450 videos there so definitely some basic idea of a kind of kind of an index so you have these like you click here so you'll see all the videos of evolution of a mediator the playlist on youtube same thing within conversation with the beautiful mind so but a lot of series different series so you can get that there and of course this was what happened last year all these were last year situation all these things happened last year and then of course ken cloak definitely all his sessions have been really nice so there's a separate session section for all the events that he's been part of and various conferences and all just one woods talk of mediation is that symposium on mediation in our culture and traditions so this was like 97 speakers from 45 countries there So Rafael in Mexico had designed this on the original poster of Woodstock. So I was really liked it. So. <laughs> It's a good one. <laughs> It was a really good one. It was. So that was really nice. I mean, we got thoughts from all over the world. So that's a, there's a lot of content there. So I, that's that I said. There's so much free content available. People can actually. The idea is that we reach out to as many people. We don't. I don't want to create this situation that I'm creating very very exclusive content for some people. because people should benefit in every corner yes everyone can contribute the same amount maybe not a problem i mean at least that aspect should not come up in reaching people so i have to balance the two because of course the the time factor is there and uh, the, taking it forward is also there so it has to be i'm trying to figure out how to do that so that's the general idea so alexandra now it's philosophy and mediation now it's your show oh i am God. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a superstar, but but no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, trying to help me to 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 reduce my stress at the moment. Uh, yeah, but circle, circle. You just talked about the circle in fact. From philosophy, from philosophy, what is love of of wisdom? Uh, mediation is uh, I don't know. Love of communication, I would say. I don't know. I think this two, this two, uh, this two words or this two arts <laughs> have the the thing in common uh, uh, is the love of dialogue, either of speaking out something or either of uh, hearing some things that is being said to disconstruct it some some houses so that uh, we we manage to understand each other or to be understood. So. 
so uh, yeah the, the common thing i think of these two two main ideas is uh, is dialogue and what would we do without dialogue uh, i will have to speak about my present experience of course <laughs> because this is what is more uh yeah calling me uh, uh, at the moment and and you say you, you i think uh, uh, i'm supporting you with the circle idea without knowing i could uh, i could uh, uh, call it a circle because here as my everyday work i have to manage a team of uh, 45 person you know and uh, well it's quite a, 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 a quite some people <laughs> to to have an eye an eye on you know and especially in the uh, very fluctuating conditions right when there is a lot to do uh, because uh, there is a hectic uh, rivals of of of, of uh, refugees like it was uh, in the first months uh, there is no time for for thinking, for gossiping, for all la la, you just do what needs to be done. But it's true that, for instance, in several times, several months, it's been uh, more and more quiet, and um, for many reasons, and so reasons that probably will be explained uh, uh, in twenty years after the end of this whole uh, situation, probably. But uh, yeah, behavior of, of migration of migrating people are just impossible to to predict right so it at the moment uh, yeah it's been a while it's been quiet and uh, our work at reception center even if there is nobody is about being present right it's about presence and how to fight <laughs> you know when you're at night or when you don't have very much to do and still be present with a quality presence you know because uh, even if not happen, nothing is happening, you, you as a worker of an NGO or a, or of a place helping refugees, you need to behave, right? Somehow, but human nature is uh, human nature. So, so uh, when not much is happening, human nature is coming back, and dialogue takes different different kind of uh, of uh, shapes in the the moment, and you know then starts gossiping you know just people take what is uh, what is available to discuss to exchange and it can sometimes become even conflicting for no reason right <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, so this is uh, very interesting to observe first of all like uh, how, how the human nature is uh, adapting to <laughs> activity or to lesser activity this is also fun but it's also about us being a, a team leader or uh, or something how to the circle of people because this is my circle this is where I'm, i want to reach the point is uh, how to maintain dialogue and quality dialogue be, between people uh, even if of course our main uh, uh, purpose is to help uh, refugees but if we're not if they are not there or not much of them we need to have quality relationship between our colleagues right this is basic it sounds basic but not always that easy to to realize so uh, uh, so i have a lot of this kind of 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 of, of things to do very basic and i this is where i love your little underline you had for when you when you do edutainment when you don't need netflix just connect to vikram resources <laughs> here it's the same for me i don't need netflix i just i need to look at my circle and i have a new episode every day <laughs> you know with something that happened you know and something to try and solve and maybe also to show a new path as a bit like you you said like uh, you know bring people together because you know it's like oh i heard about him la 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 and this uh, i heard he told this la 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 and it's a different version of course so okay i cannot do mediation like this of course so you do what either you you speak together and if you need my assistance i'm happy to do so <laughs> whenever you want or you can try on your on your own you know and uh and it's not natural <laughs> this is uh <laughs> this is uh, uh yeah the conclusion right <laughs> uh, uh yeah people yeah, prefer to to speak out the difficulties to someone else either rather than 
taking somehow the courage or the responsibility to take it in front of the other person to try and, and solve it, right? And uh, every day I just take conscious of, uh, conscience of this, that it's so difficult to be honest with, uh, um, with yourself and with the other one to try and, and uh, get to a flat, uh, yeah, uh, understanding of uh, each other, right? Um, I had such an example last week where it was really bad, you know, you know, this colleague, uh, uh, he's uh, talking bad to me, he's treating me this way, that way, you know, like, oh, wow, I'm very, I was very surprised and very sad about this situation because I know all of the, of the circle members, you know, like my, you know, father, sister, <laughs> such a long time, I don't know, you know, uh, and like, okay, and even, you know, some stuff that are not aligned with the behavior at work, which is not acceptable, you cannot speak badly or treat people differently because you have an issue with them, even uh, with, with your uh a coordinator even if something is not uh, you don't accept a person you need to behave the same way and treat everybody the same way right so i was a bit worried when i heard this and uh, i spoke to to, to the concerned person and uh, i got uh, obviously a, a bit of a little <laughs> different version <laughs> um uh, and I said to both of them, but you know, the truth is somewhere in the middle. So you have, <laughs> you have some, fine, you have, uh, this behavior is not acceptable for work. Uh, and it appears that this is these two guys, uh, a guy and a girl, and used to be very close, very good friends. I was very surprised also by this, by this notice. And um, uh, I talked to, to the guy and I told him, yeah, but this behavior as a coordinator is not acceptable. You used to be good friends. Please, please find a solution. Well, either on your own or if not, I'm happy to assist. But then you, you tell me, you, you decide together, okay, you cannot reach it on your own. And uh, let's call Alex to, to help. Okay, even uh, I'm not the most neutral person, but I, I, I told them I'm, I feel comfortable <laughs> to, to help you with, with, this, with this discussion. Uh, and a few days after, I heard a conversation appeared, not occurred, so between the two of them, and that the misunderstanding uh, disappeared. And I was like, oh, kind of happy. Maybe this is a bit of the circle of something, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I just hope that sometimes that they can, they can, yeah, just understand that when talking, you just make can it, talking helps make the thing less bigger, less big than they that they look like, right? So it's really the power of this dialogue, and um, um, yeah. So yeah, how is it philosophy? I don't, I don't know. I think it's a kind of face, you know, because it's every day. So sometimes it's tiring. Sometimes you don't have, uh, I don't have the patience sometimes even myself, you know, because sometimes it's really about uh, little things, you know, like really little tiny silly things. I'm like, come on guys, you could, <laughs> you could see, I shouldn't even have to hear that kind of stories, right? <laughs> but no, so I'm saying, okay, it doesn't matter. I, it's my, it's my job. But it's part of my job, right? I think uh, because we're here to bring, uh, uh, it's not to bring peace, but at least to, yeah, to bring, to bring a, a neutral ho uh, help to people fleeing war. So we are, it, it's absolutely uh, out of our mission to add conflict in all this, right? So let's try and teach as much as possible to, to, to solve their issues like this without the gossiping. Uh, I can't remember if I addressed this topic the other day or not, but, uh, and I don't know what is the literature talking, uh, saying about this topic, but the, 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 the very vicious, bad effect of gossiping 
it's terrible. I like gossiping is like the biggest uh, uh, first thing to, to conflicts. It's terrible. And, um, you know, I am from a, a big city where you are incognito all the time. You go, I go out on the street, nobody knows me and that's fine. But here in Poland, I live in a city when I do cross uh, two streets, I said hello to two or three person. And, you know, so everybody knows you or recognize you or have seen you some something. And people, you know, are always like, oh, uh, you know, I've seen this one with that one doing this thing. And, you know, you hear their third version, you know, always transformed. And uh, in a conflict uh, uh, zone, it's really, uh, hopefully, uh, fortunately, Poland is not a conflicted uh, area, but, um, but still this tension, let's say, of what is happening uh, uh, close has uh, an impact on the way people take decision or are thinking. And this also I can observe. And uh, as a humanitarian or even as a team leader, let's say, uh, I have to be careful on how people are changing their behavior, right? And try to be very sensitive and observe all these things. And uh, uh, yeah, it's really, uh, really uh, interesting. I'm, I'm really fascinated by, by, by the change it, it impacts, you know, and how the environment, the external environment impacts the quality of our dialogue. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting. That, that's a very interesting thing. But this, I think, Alex, Alex, you need to actually maybe put it in writing or something. Let's put this out because I think this is a really interesting part but but only thing alex in all this how are you how are you taking care of yourself that is the most important part uh it's also a very important part and um yeah, of course, the main, uh, the main, the main uh, tool for this is, of course, dialogue. Again, <laughs> there is no other other solution than uh, dealing with your inter internal conflict as well than uh, talking with uh, with someone. So, yeah, not only this, but when there is something tough, sometimes or difficult in management or in hearing stuff, uh, uh, because uh, maybe for <laughs> for those who don't who don't know, in my team I have Polish people. I have Ukrainian people and Ukrainian refugees also uh, that we could uh, hire to, to work with us. And so I have this uh, great uh, pleasure to observe their <laughs> adaptation to the new field <laughs> where they arrive. And so sometimes it's true, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's touching. And uh, yeah, so... As I told, it's a bit more quiet now. So to resource myself, to take care of myself. Uh, so it's talking either to try to find some people not connected to, to the work a bit to change the, the mind. I enjoy very much going, uh, have walk in the nature here. The, the nature is very close everywhere, very um, uh, wild in a sense, not wild that, uh, you know, I will... Uh, well, uh, Although I heard there are some bears and, and wolves, but <laughs> but not uh, <laughs> there are not much people. So it's really cool to to get uh, uh, lost in the quiet places and enjoy the the harmony of of of, of nature. Yeah, and I think this is what is um, helping me is uh, looking for a harmonious thing. So I miss a bit uh, some uh, uh, you know art or music uh, thing like this a bit here, even if I can listen. But what helps me when something every I think it is a bit, you know, <laughs> unsettled is to look at uh, harmonious things to be inspired, <laughs> to be inspired again by some natural order, <laughs> I would say. No, you, you put out such beautiful pictures on Instagram and all, all that, yeah. I mean, with, with the autumn coming in and all that was really beautiful places. Absolutely beautiful. I'm amazed. Every every time here, I'm telling you, I'm going to the mountain or to somewhere in the countryside. Uh, uh, it always reminds me how nature is generous to to us from uh, any from every way. Really, that we have this. Uh, uh, we're so lucky to have all this uh, around us. We just need to look at it and to remind that we have this power of observation that reminds us that we can reach to so uh, so much beautiful things, even in, if we're in difficult situation. That uh, and I hear I'm talking about me, but even more, of course, uh, of of, uh, of uh, refugees, for instance, or people staying in in, in Ukraine. But, 
for this I have less experience. I don't know, I'm always uh, thinking, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, nature is very powerful uh, asset to, <laughs> to resource uh, anyone. And uh, um, yeah, I always, how to say, encourage anyone to, to, to remember this because you just, to take your your coat, put some shoes, <laughs> and go out. So, <laughs> so you know, no cost, no nothing. Just a, a bit of time, and just open your eyes and your ears and your everything. Right? I got blessed the other day with a huge triple rainbow. You know, like on a postcard. I said, no, it's not the postcard. It's just especially for me at the moment <laughs> happening. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm doing the postcard. <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 yeah so yeah yeah it's important and uh, and talking is important and uh, to on, on the same topic also uh and about the circle, but I think because I think it's close also to the issues we can have to to bring people to mediation, you know, because always I think this is uh you know, I think 50% of the mediation job is to bring people at the table, I think, right? Exactly. It's uh, really 50% uh, of the job. And uh, same thing in our NGO, for instance, we offer to our people for free uh, um, uh, psychological assistance, you know, in their language where they can have talk one-to-one -one with a, a psychologist uh, if there is too much of something uh, in there because they've heard too much uh, sad stories because there is too much work because there's something at all for any any kind of, of, of difficulties and um I, nobody nobody is using it you know there is this something when I speak to my to the team please if I, and I remind them there is this tool people are are afraid to talking to a, a third person who I prefer to know to someone I know. Uh, but then I often tell them, but then your 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 intention, because this person could say it to someone else, because it's not uh, found because it's your friend, your sister, your mom, your wife, your husband, your something, you know, this person is inside your system. So because I, I had so many issue of conflict based on oh but he told the boy in my stuff to someone else or everybody knows it but uh, in a different way and uh, this kind of things you know like but if it's something that hurts you and that uh, you need to discuss completely and uh, it's too difficult to to, to 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 talk to someone who is too close try the third party option right <laughs> and the third party option <laughs> Oh my God! It's really not uh, it's not uh, natural at all in this culture. Like I think Polish and Ukrainian culture and all uh, all uh, organization together. I think we are we are uh, facing the same uh, conclusion. Conclusion, you know. So uh, psychologists uh, are are used for people for sick people. I'm like, okay, so how? how to overcome this uh, stereotype people have in their head. This is my biggest question at the moment. Well, that's interesting. I think this is something which really, I, I don't know if when it starts, I think right from when people are growing up from that point of time onwards, I think this is something which a culture develops where you really maybe don't know. First of all, you maybe don't know whom to go to. Maybe mm -hmm. I think the, those people whom you, should have identified and the community should have identified or within the school they should have identified that identification process is not happening so those people are there but they're not you know they're not available or you don't have a, of course you don't have a structure of course we don't have a structure also but the right people are not identified because you're identifying people on different levels in schools you're identifying them on their mm. ac academic aspect of it who's doing well who's doing that in your class and your school focuses on that side but human relationships who's good at creating these kinds of better human relationships among them mm. that doesn't seem to be a priority anywhere so so those are the important people we need to identify and i mean value them which is what i keep saying we have to value them because they're special but they get sidelined because focus of society is on a different a totally different angle and these people don't matter in those in the larger <laughs> i think the focus of society or the way it's gone so we have to just refocus that that's why alexandra we have we have work to do at the grassroots level to change yeah. that whole culture it's going it's to take its time step by step 
but to put focus on people who actually can bring people together that's one mm-hmm. those people and of course the ones who can actually sit with you assist you in resolving something that they have a very important role to play because today you might not understand but in when you look at things from a long term perspective and if you are not able to resolve things in your small little community this is going to escalate into what you are in the backdrop of what you are doing your work and your it's just people that's all but it goes into that level because no one at that point of time helped you resolve something mm-hmm. yeah it's true and i'm uh, i'm always wondering what are the key things that make you choose the mediator you know what what and i think it's all about how do you give trust to someone That's right okay. how do you and this question is so personal if i'm so linked to all your history right from how do you give trust to someone and from my observation here okay i'm not a sociologist no i'm not a philosopher unfortunately neither a psychologist i wish i was but i'm just observing and uh, <laughs> and uh, I, i i wish i had more <laughs> material but uh, yeah trust in my env- today environment okay i'm not generalizing anything but seems to be something very volatile you know like energy markets like stuff trading <laughs> you know it's something you give today you take back tomorrow you give to someone else tomorrow and like this so <laughs> you know really it's really my my feeling here in how it's working so it's very difficult to to build you know a stable uh So it requires a lot of work to 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 build this this trust uh, to, to the person so that they are sure they can come to that place and not to another one to to, to have their problem resolved. And so, yeah, the trust question is to me. Uh, But again, yeah. look, Alex, I think we also have to go back into maybe the history of development of society. I think yeah. the fact that people did not want people to trust each other. because how mm. you only you only you can only rule over people when you create the divide that's the only way you can do it so you create that whole atmosphere that people can't trust each other and that's that's why you become the authority figure and then you say okay i will be the one who comes in to resolve because you trust me <laughs> that's that's the whole idea behind structures that we yeah, create yeah you're right mm. so that is where people have to understand right at the first level that look Be, be, there are people who break up societies and there are people who want to bring them together so the people who have to bring them together value them because entire our own politics and everything goes on to that path of mm. some people dividing on various aspects it could be whatever aspect it could be a certain issue it could be on race on color on religion whatever but that's what they survive on so that is where this whole grassroots activity right at that first level that you can actually trust someone there is someone within you forget someone from outside i mean there are people within your little circle of people whom you can trust and mm-hmm. i'm telling you they already know that at the right at the school level they know that i've spoken to children and they tell me about those children i've spoken to people mm-hmm. in of communities and they know those people now only thing is that nothing beyond that can happen because you no one wants to create systems governments also i mean i mean look of course people will try but governments also finally do they really want people to sit together and resolve their disputes <laughs> do they really want that i don't know i mean this is a question we have to ask that of course <laughs> where is your survival as a as a as a political body where is your survival if people are going to resolve things within themselves and you can't create some kind of divisions between them so do they really want to do that so that's why this whole atmosphere to have to have, i mean whole thing has to be created by people themselves don't expect i keep saying i mean forget the government or anyone wanting to create these systems you do have to do it yourself we don't have to take anyone else into it it is all a people's process it's a people's movement is going to be so, i mean just it's a thought we are going to refine it as we go about alex we'll take it as we go along we'll keep developing it but at least I, the good people with good thoughts when they come together and good intentions i think good things will happen yeah no, i i i completely uh, 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 i agree with you of course i i agree uh, i'm just wondering now that when people give trust to that person why it breaks at some points right uh, you know if uh, i'm just thinking of this last example i mentioned of these two colleagues who were very close then because of some 
misunderstanding everything uh, for, 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 uh, fall apart and uh, and again it came back you know so what what's happening that because it Okay, to be more in detail, sorry, that so they they get to argue because they were uh, opening themselves to each other about their uh, difficulties uh, in relationship at home, you know. And uh, what well, one of them said, uh, the, but she she told everything outside. It's really not fun when I, when I was talking and trusting her in the, in sharing my difficulties, you know. So he chose this person as this. Uh, uh, third party to his difficult situation, right? <laughs> and uh, what happens that this trust he gave him is, 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 is broken. It's something so delicate, right? And I'm, I'm wondering, so this is a very small system because this is, these are two friends talking about their, 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 their difficulties, but even in a bigger, uh, in a circle, even a small one. So if we identify this mediator person, how to ensure also this mediator person uh, will remain a trustworthy person, you know? Well, I'll tell you, let me tell you that when people, it's not just one person because there will be a lot of people who are actually going to identify them. And finally, look, a mediator can only come in when bo bo all the participants are willing to trust this person. So we, so many people or whoever those people are going to be, how many, but when they tell you that, okay, this person within our community or within our school is someone who has that mindset, they've actually looked at a lot of factors. They have looked at that conduct of that person over time. It's not that one transaction. It's like them, every aspect of them. And they also might not be able to put it in words as to what is it that gives them that trust. They might not mm -hmm. be able to put it. Is it because at one point of time, they, there was some kind of some transaction in the human transaction in relationship that happened and they conducted themselves in this way. So it it's like a check one brownie point the person got some other aspect the way they were even talking to someone so that came in so i think it's all a matter of people putting it all down and not breaking it up into specifics as to why but finally when they give you an output and say this person they've looked at all that so if collectively if people are telling you that this person can be trusted and is someone who has that mindset I think a lot of it will be taken care of by that. So it's yes. not someone else coming yes. and telling you, you yourself have generated this, whatever feelings about this person. It's all comes from a lot of things that you are seeing. So that's why it's important that it comes out from the, those people itself. Mm. Ah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um... But it's interesting also because my position is not totally neutral, for instance, in the situation because I am their manager, right? So I'm not totally uh, a third party, of course, even if, yeah, really uh, my aim here is to have a, a neutral uh, team uh, respecting each other, respecting some main values uh, uh, towards the refugees and towards them themselves. So I would like to, of course, uh, 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 diffuse uh, this kind of, of, of uh, peace and dialogue uh, exchange between uh, uh, each other. Uh, but, um, oh, I lost my thought. Oh, terrible. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you, you look, first of all, Alex, you're in a very stressful situation. So definitely <laughs> uh, these things may happen, may happen. It should be, so it's yeah, okay. Yeah, it's no, perfectly it's all right. The, the There's so much happening. Is, is going on. First of all, Hamas, <laughs> you've you spent that much time there continuously. You, you haven't taken a break. You didn't go back to Paris and come back. You, nothing like that? Uh, just twice, you know, a week. So very short, nothing. It's true. There, there, there's been no like such a real break, I would say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it might uh, happen uh, sooner now. Uh, yeah, and sometimes it's true. So much uh, things at the same time to think that, uh, yeah. I should have maybe prepared a bit, a bit more. <laughs> no, that's perfectly all right. That's perfectly all right. We understand. That's not a problem at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but um, uh, yeah. Anyway, this this role is different. Yeah, it's difficult to uh, find of mediation. Of mediator is difficult when you're when you're the. Uh, the manager, I would say, ah, and this topic, I can come back. It came back to me. It's also this culture of, uh, you know, 
What is the difference between, uh, uh, it's always my question, right? What is the difference between saying someone you have a difficulty uh, and saying it uh, with a will of denunciation? You know, a lot of people feel when they say something bad uh, happening to them or to their colleague or between them and a colleague, it's like a, a denunciation of something is not happening well. And I'm like, wow, this is an interesting thought, right? Uh, because I'm not here to, to, to judge. I just would like to have a, peace, a peaceful uh, team working, right? This is what I, 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 I propose you and what I really want for us to be able to work with people who need our help, right? So if we're not able to be, to be working peacefully together, how can we help people uh, out of a conflict? So I'm always trying to uh, explain this, but also another cultural aspect, you know, that when you say something bad, they all, they are all afraid about the judgment uh, they can uh, re are receiving, or they're afraid that we see them judging. And uh, it's very interesting as well. Like, you know, it's like at school, but I'm dealing with adults. So it's funny. <laughs> oh, nothing, although, like I said, Alex doesn't change. Nothing changes. That's what I was saying. Right? Yeah, Be children exactly. school, nothing changes. The whole thing remains Exactly. The same. So really, you're totally right. Let's start from school. Really, really, really. <laughs> yeah. So I'm also trying to to uh, to inspire them in this way of of sharing. It has nothing to do with this denunciation. It's just oh, I cannot help myself on my own. So I just need someone to to help me on this, right? And that's it. But yeah, there is a lot uh, big <laughs> big way to to do uh, until it's uh, seen this way. Uh, Yep. Yeah, uh, I'm very interesting. Uh, if I'm intrigued by by this uh, these things, because if it was a, a small thing, so why wouldn't you uh, resolve it yourself, for instance? It's, it's Again, not a problem. There is no that. problem to have a problem. It happens to everyone, right? If, even to me, I'm telling that all the time. You know, even me, I go to the psychologist or I speak to someone when there is difficult or to the boss when no, it's, uh, you know, we're all human. It's uh, nothing bad about, nothing is wrong about having a, a difficulty with someone. The wrong thing is, uh, is to stay with this because this makes a bigger situation, a worse situation, and we don't need this one. Really, we don't need this one. So, but then, yeah, if, so but, 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 but Alex, let me then now because you this this period of your life, you've seen so much. I mean, what you've seen there and the people and the, all that. In terms of your philosophy of life, has that changed over these months? Oh yeah, I think uh, I think I've broadened my observation capacity again. You know, and uh, the more uh, the more details you can see, and the more uh, you know, it's like this uh, little details in drawings or in sculpting uh, cathedrals or something. You know, I feel I am. Uh, um, I've known a bit more of the of the uh, complexity of human relationship a bit, you know. So it helps understand a bit more or accept maybe a bit something that is different because, well, I think every human is 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 uh, confronted to this thing to the. <laughs> It's this diversity thing, right? That this this other, like he thinks in another manner, he's doing another man. It's a, it's true even for a, a mediator, of course. And so I think all these experiences help here help me to uh, to broaden a bit my understanding of of of, of humanity. Uh, so uh, I'm very thankful for for this uh, experience, uh, and I think also this is mediators work uh, um, uh, practice and art this is why it is an art because i think it's always that you know you add a layer of uh, uh, i don't know what would be the uh, good word in english of subtlety of understanding right when we are listening to this uh, people who come to see us 
we the goal is always to see what is hidden under the under the under right this uh, uh, as i say in the in the le lessons for instance the uh, iceberg of conflict you know so it's always easy to see the 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 peak outside the water but the idea is really to get always deeper and deeper and deeper and i think here it's a great practice to to try and then go into the deep water so i'm i'm really thankful for this because it's helping to having a a, a, a bit more i don't know the words no english words see <laughs> a more detailed uh, uh, more subtle yeah understanding of of, of uh, emotions and of way of of, of thinking so this is how it how it helps and uh, the other thing maybe that I, I, I won't say it changed, but that has been improved or or uh, uh, that is stronger now is this will of um, uh, not judging too fast. Take your time. Take your time to listen both parties or three parties or all the parties, you know, like. There is no rush in in being right. It's I know it's nothing new, but it's so it's so basic and so useful to repeat that there is no rush to be right. There is no point to be right. We are all right, uh, and uh, the truth is somewhere between us. We just need to share it together. So it's about sharing, you know. Like and uh, it's really just a, a reinforced. Uh, uh, a reinforced feeling I have after all, all, all this because uh, we need so much, uh, so so few things to get uh, to get mad at each other. That uh, yeah, <laughs> this is what makes a war. So yeah. Well, what I'm going to do now because I mean I'm through. It started with Andrea. Andrea put up a definition of philosophy, and from there the whole thought process and. I mean, I'm just trying to explore this aspect, whether I don't know whether you heard this in some sessions, but mediation and philosophy and mediator and philosopher. So I'm putting up the definition. Uh, let's just go through it. I mean, you go through it and tell me what you think of okay, philosophy okay. and mediation. So I found this really interesting. Mm -hmm. Should I also read it at the same time or are you, I mean sometimes some people get disturbed maybe for the people i don't know yeah. maybe for the people there okay. happy so, to... so philosophy is quite unlike any other field it is unique both in its methods and in the nature and breadth of its subject matter at the same time alex while i'm reading this you are looking at it from the mediation perspective okay yes okay <laughs> Philosophy pursues questions in every dimension of human life and its techniques apply to problems in any field of study or endeavor. No brief definition expresses the richness and variety of philosophy. It may be described in many ways. It is a reasoned pursuit of fundamental truths, a quest for understanding, a study of principles of conduct. It seeks to establish standards of evidence to provide rational methods of resolving conflicts and to create techniques for evaluating ideas and arguments. Philosophy develops the capacity to see the world from the perspective of other individuals and other cultures, which you will relate to now. It enhances Absolutely. one's ability to perceive the relationships among the various fields of study, which is also important in your case because you, uh, the field of study that you come from, and it deepens one's sense of the meaning and variety of human experience. Interesting oh, wow. thing that happened in the morning, there was a session with Greg, and he looked at this word. He said, I only thing I don't agree is with rational, because <laughs> when it comes to maybe just solutions or the, the direction in which it has to go, rationality should not come in the way. <laughs> so, that, so look, that's what I'm saying. I'm putting it out there for thoughts to come out. And let's see where it goes. So this is in relation to philosophy, the same thing in relation to the philosopher and mediator. Our mediators, yeah. philosophers and that connection. So what are your thoughts on that? That'll be interesting. Ah, indeed, it's really, uh, yeah, it's really beautiful because it shows all the the broad impact of this uh, of this activity, and uh, indeed, I think it's common to to mediation. Uh, maybe the thing that this definition doesn't point, uh, uh, and which makes it a bit different from uh, from the mediation, is this specific third party thing, right? Is that you have this outside someone uh, in your situation whereas when you're philosophing maybe uh, 
you can just share at the same level. Of, I, I don't. I have in my head all these dialogues of the Socrates dialogue, the Socrates dialogues, all this, all these things in my in my head, and it's a. Um, it's like it's like uh, you know, uh, like philosophy is something that allows you to 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 go to mediation because it set uh, it sets all that is needed to be listening to to to, to someone, right? It's all about uh, all this. Uh, tools of all this quality of, of the mind that help you to, to perceive the complexity of a human perception of a, of a situation, right? Uh, which is absolutely needed, I think, to a mediator. But the mediator has the specific interesting and difficult role of being outside of somebody's situation, right? And... Uh, and trying not to come in when the philosopher maybe I don't know uh, this side uh, I should yeah, yeah I would like to hear philosopher uh, philosopher you know and I should ask my friends but I, I had no, no time to, to to contact her I have a, a good friend of mine who's doing philosophy in companies and I think it's a brilliant idea also you know uh, to, to open the people on on the dialogue uh, uh, again uh, and. Um, yeah, when you're philosophing, you don't need to be external. You can just apply it to to what you observe your your for yourself. Found this would be maybe the the thing. And I like this. Yeah, maybe this right rational thing is uh, is uh, maybe it's true. But um, I like to say for for the mediator that he needs to have some uh, to to remain at this position of being external. Uh, he needs a bit of rationality. I don't know how to say that, but like he needs a bit of this uh, uh, self rigor, right? To be able to 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 be exter to re to be external, and this requires a bit of uh, of this procedure of this rational thing of this you know organizing your 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 approach, let's say, would, this is maybe my engineering skills, I'm sorry, like <laughs> that are speaking at the moment, I cannot, you know, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot deny all of my thing, although I totally agree that rationality has nothing to, uh, to help you with uh, in the, in the way people are exchanging and uh, understanding that situation, this I, I, I totally uh, agree that here rationality has nothing to do, but the mediator offer that space, and this is the only thing I could call rational in this because this is the shape of the space is like built by the by the mediator. <laughs> so <laughs> well, rational again, it's not the word, but it's it it should have a, a shape, you know, like a, a shape some and a... <laughs> some structure. Some structure is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. That... yeah. Because look, I think where where he's coming from is that. The fact that it can go in any direction and to put boundaries to it in any way, I think that's what his basic I think thoughts were. We'll, of course, we'll have future sessions on this to further refine it. But I just felt that this is one aspect that we don't even maybe look at. I mean, you're look, looking at a process and you keep talking about it. But as a philosopher and what all goes into that, being a philosopher, so that people can relate to what all goes in being for being a mediator. I mean, there are so many, I mean, in terms of philosophy, what we're looking at in the same way, mediation is also there are a lot of aspects. I mean, let's say it's complex. Let's say it's not mm -hmm. as simple as people might want to believe mm -hmm. that, oh, someone's sitting with two people and that's it. There's yeah. so much <laughs> happening there, so much happening there. Mm -hmm. And from the mediator's perspective, what all has to be taken account of, taken care of from the person within, first of all, from the mediator within mm -hmm. all these aspects that, well, of course, are listed there. All those things, I think, gets lost and no one really talks about it. And I think that's why the whole concept of saying that, look, mediators are special. When I say that, I think a lot of this has to be taken into account because on the other end, there is some simplification of all this that you go for a 40 hour course and you become a mediator. I think yeah. just something which for me, that is a, a very big, big issue because then you what, you, what are you saying? I mean, that's all it takes. There is so much. Alex has grown up in a, in a multicultural environment. What she's picked up from there, 
and her own value systems which of course look you'll hear me say this because i'm telling you this is something that i've been saying for a very long time and that mm. ev- evolution of a mediator series is all behind that that whole this whole con- thought behind it that all these aspects make a mediator a mediator and yeah. let's not discount it so easily and say mm. we'll make a mediator in 40 hours i mean so yeah. let's not do that i mean that's i think that's that's the whole idea for me put put it out there Hmm. that there is so much which will go into it, which will be look this experience of yours which is why i'm asking you about what this experience it will it would have changed you your whole thought process the way you interact with people everything hmm. would have changed so every time it is a new person coming in and you are you are new i mean you you are a different you're person you mean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. me <laughs> which is what greg was also talking about in the moment it's all about the moment so in that moment that it's a new person it's he was t- talking about a river and it's not the same river it's not the mm. same man kind of exactly. thing exactly everything is changing on a moment to moment basis and it's a new inspiration also you know i really you know uh, one of my dream when i was younger is to become an artist i wanted to be a musician or i wanted to be an opera singer all this thing and uh, and you know what my inspiration relation about art is practice every day you know because every day you bring something else to your uh, to your to your practice and really mediation is the same thing exactly as you said it's not like because i have a, a pen i can i can paint a piece of art i can draw something of course but not a piece of art right and um i think yeah mediation is a bit the the same okay some uh, some people have probably talent <laughs> at the beginning or not but you can probably learn some stuff but you you need this kind of inspiration to dig in that topic right to to have the curiosity of discovering all this uh, layers of of uh, of the word of the how the human being is uh, yeah developing uh, himself or herself in the word and uh, and yeah i think this is what is being uh, uh, an artist mediator so at, at least at least if if i try to follow that path because i think it's a uh, lifelong pass to become a, <laughs> a super mediator <laughs> uh, uh, it's about uh, yeah having this uh, inspiration internal inspiration to still be more and more open it's about i don't know i think like you know like the uh, the uh, how do you call uh, a painter paint with a Uh, what is his main instrument i'm sorry i cannot find the word at the moment but uh, or a singer use his uh, his or his, its voice to sing and uh, i think the tool for a mediator would be uh, his open mindedness right exactly. is how to to develop his open mindedness in all the ways you know north west south east you know uh, and uh, five uh, fifth dimension and fourth dimension and you know all these things and i think this is our uh, our our tool is how to develop this it's always bigger and bigger or deeper yeah open mindedness uh, on what's happening is that is i mean this is i mean what you just said is such an important aspect that being open so you're able to of course pick up from it but at the same time you're not judgmental so mm. you and the fact that you are curious about things mm. and the i mean of course greg also did speak about it the fact like socrates says the only thing i know is i, do, I don't know anything mm. <laughs> so exactly and for someone to actually be able to accept that and mm. say that that's a good thing that is yeah. the important part because people feel that you should never say you don't know anything so you must <laughs> always show that you know something so mm. i think to be able to get to that point is a very special aspect and that's why you, I mean, it's all about evolution right? he's a evolution mm-hmm. of a mediator but let's go back to that definition okay let's go to that. now let's look at it from the mediator's perspective as a philosopher and why it's why it's special because the nature and breadth of the subject matter of course i'm telling you that it's now people of course there is a discussion mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. on the whether you need to have domain knowledge or not and here the idea is that a person should be able to get into any subject mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's where your curiosity comes in and to be able to pick up but you should also be able to of course understand what's happening as i'm not saying that you just you generally you're actually understanding also but you're not mm-hmm. you're open to pick up from whatever so i think that's of course right 
philosophy pursues questions every dimension of human life i don't think there is any in terms of philosophy mediation or in relation to the mediator no, no d- debate on this and its techniques apply to problems in any field of study or endeavor not a problem definitely mm-hmm. it does no brief definition expresses the richness and variety of philosophy that's what we are mm-hmm. discussing here absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> So it is a re- reasoned pursuit of now reasoned is something which we of course we I mean I'm just trying a little dissection I'm doing of it because I really yeah. found this interesting so I thought let's Absolutely. go more the reason you should share of, it with us you should share it with us this, this yeah yeah this yeah absolutely yeah. this is which is this is the American Philosophical Association ah, so I, I, I put it up maybe in one in one of the posts also I'll put it up there mm. So reason pursuit of fundamental truths a quest for understanding i think this is the important thing a quest for understanding a study of principles of conduct i mean mm-hmm. i think all those things i think which can relate to so i think yeah now of course with greg's rational aspect we will debate rational <laughs> we will have a separate discussion <laughs> on rational so that, I, i'll have to listen to his uh, to his session <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> Yeah. and to create techniques for evaluating ideas and arguments i think this is something which definitely has to happen on an ongoing basis so but i think this is the most important thing which everyone can't do and this is something that is a special aspect to see yeah. the world from the perspective of other Absolutely. individuals and other cultures mm-hmm. both these aspects mm-hmm. i think maybe it just sounds like words just put out there mm-hmm. but to be able to reach this point when you can do that is something which takes a lot of it let's say is it experience it is a certain mindset it is again let's go back to maybe the upbringing everything it could be a lot of factors to be able mm. to reach this point when you can do that but like i said i mean I always keep saying there is a theoretical aspect of what you can maybe in relation to mediation someone can tell you mm-hmm. but when it comes down to what in practice this is it's a, i mean it's not easy for people to do that No, oh, it's not. It's not. And I just I could add maybe to to some from this experience. What what makes this experience very also port- specific for me is uh, to explain to the people who don't know me. This is why I have two flags. <laughs> I am French, but my parents are Polish, right? And uh, I am here helping in Poland Ukrainian refugees. And uh, here I understand a new concept. I had no idea before because I didn't study any conflict topics before. But the polarization of conflicts, right? So where where Polish people would take me somehow on their side, you know, where uh, 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 about Ukraine be, be, being different. And this is where I said, but you cannot. do that because you know i'm polish of course in a sense that i understand i speak your language and i understand your culture very good but i've been raised in france so i am a, um, a migrant like the ukrainians who are, are at the moment in in the country in poland where they're coming to see you so in fact i have in my in my own yeah personality at the moment i have the both situation you know uh, the both af- aspects uh, available to try and understand as best as possible let's say what are the different pop- people coming through and it's really a rich thing and uh, yeah as i told you i think i will need a bit more time to, to digest all this <laughs> things i've discovered <laughs> about uh, me and my understanding but this position i have uh, uh, have the chance to have by this fact is really interesting in this situation as well it's true yeah yeah i mean mm-hmm. like I said, and these are things that maybe a person doesn't even know a lot of what is happening within you and the things that you are picking up certain mm-hmm. things you can express in words and say that but it would have changed you totally as a person i mean definitely oh, yeah. definitely <laughs> definitely <laughs> but we'll go to the last sentence of this which was i felt found very important and it deepens one sense of the meaning and variety of human experience i think which is something that you're also maybe experiencing mm. right now yeah absolutely that. so i think absolutely. this is so we have to now it's, uh, yeah it's a good definition this. sorry yeah. i cut your excuse me no I mean, i'm just saying we have we, we have to build on this as we go along but we've mm. given the andrea has given us a seed and a thought a, because i tell you on one end we have this whole theoretical aspect and you when if someone says philosophy and mediation what is the what is the symposium is doing where does it fit in <laughs> yeah 
but to that extent i think andrea gave it a very nice direction in a simple way at least there is some correlation there otherwise people really would think what is the correlation and as we go along i think we'll understand mm. that there is lots happening here and, mm. and which i was which i was saying this is i mean through all of these sessions there is mediation philosophy in practice is a mediator a philosopher in practice <laughs> <laughs> uh, for sure i mean in fact uh, for sure every every human being breathing i think is a philosopher should be at least <laughs> and be impressed and ask himself question about what's happening around him so or her so <laughs> but alex you are saying that you are saying that because you are like that everyone is yeah. not like that that's what yeah, i'm saying that's why the whole concept of being special being to be pointed out because everyone doesn't have that thought process they're not yeah. doing it because you might assume look i i look at it this way everyone must be looking at it that way it is not happening that is what needs to be pointed out and that's why i'm saying that this is a matter of don't demean mediators by saying we'll make you in 40 hour factories <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah okay so let's invite to people let's invite people to have to develop this this mindset then exactly, i agree exactly. that's so what we have happy. to do then. so that's what happy. we're going to do if you're going to create that we're going to take it forward So Alex obviously it's a pleasure talking to you always and yes. definitely like I said any time whenever please get in touch I am the most accessible person in the world only thing is when I <laughs> when I'm on the golf course I'm disconnected from the world so my phone <laughs> okay. is switched off those hours are my hours otherwise I'm always available so How often are you playing I play in the morning almost every day Really yeah. wow for so, so my wow. mornings are spent there which is i don't know look some people do media meditation some people do media meditation i think i sometimes feel maybe this is my meditation i don't know i mean i've never looked at it from what's really there but i think it's just being out there in the open like you like you were saying i mean when you go out into nature and you're out there walking there for, for you it's a different i mean what you're experiencing within you is something special there so because obviously look Yeah, because oh look, sitting in a city like ours, which you can understand the size and what it is like. I mean, with twenty million people in a city, it's a different thing. So we won't be able to express experience nature the way you are, you can experience it. So for me, I think that is the important part to being so being out there in this green area on your own. Because the good part of golf is you don't have to have anyone with you. Yeah, that's the I best understand. part. So you can be with yourself. <laughs> Yeah. So, so the secret of a word wisdom without conflict is to to be alone. We have some solution. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, of course. Just kidding. Of course. <laughs> no, but it's great. So, and yeah, you, you're sure everyone has to find its. You know, these things that make them feel better and reset the minds and stuff. So. For its golf, for its nature, for someone else, its music or something, and it's really just important to to know what it is. So yeah, absolutely. But mm. the other thing, what, we, you, yeah, yeah. what yeah. we need to maybe what you should do is, of course, you are doing the work that you're doing within your organization. Say okay, we are putting together a mediation circle. And so as a separate aspect part of it so it doesn't seem like it is you know, people are work or something yeah it's but no, they they should feel i mean i'm just thinking that let them feel part of the whole thing okay this is a mediation circle and we are trying to get okay, we're trying to resolve things within ourselves so they don't feel that it is something which is an external thing that happens outside no it can happen within mm. something i mean i'm trying to do this in organizations i'm actually creating this I and mean, of course the process is being refined so as we go along we'll define it but a, a kind of a feeling of a of your space like you keep yeah. saying a safe space kind of thing so to mm -hmm. be able to create that safe space within organizations for people mm -hmm. to approach and feel a part of because i think what has happened is people i think have started maybe they feel alienated from the surroundings for whatever reason so i think the first thing is that just the fact that there is a space which is their space is so and they yeah, can be yeah, part sure. of that I think that by itself will give you some kind of a feeling of a feeling of ownership or maybe just a feeling of belonging which I think over time has been missed out in society in general I mean I keep yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about sure. this whole communities breaking up and everything 
So if you can create this, it might be a small circle to start with, but at least there's a feeling of belonging. And yeah. when there is a feeling of belonging comes with it certain kind of a social pressure, call it social pressure. Mm -hmm. So you are being able to resolve things for the larger good of the community, yeah. which I yeah. think has got missed out over time that, okay, mm -hmm. why am I doing this? this is my individual thing. I have, I'm, I'm like, this is, I mean, I don't have to, I'm not answerable to the world. I'm not answerable to anything. It's just me. But people have to understand, no, it's not just you. It is a, you're part of a community mm -hmm. and feeling that part. Same thing will happen when we create a climate, I put out a climate change mediation circle. So mm -hmm. as right at the grassroots level, a community feels part of the larger whole, which is the world mediation circle, but you feel part of it because everything that you do has some connection to the larger space also. So mm -hmm. there's a belonging here to the community, but there's a belonging to the world also. So to mm -hmm. create that kind of a, I mean, it's just a, it will be, let's see how it goes. We'll put it out there. Let's see, we'll get a feedback. Then we'll understand for how, what people are looking at it in the positives. If they're looking at negatives, mm -hmm. we'll take it forward. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Uh, to be tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's discuss this exactly. uh, some more. Thank you very much, Bikram, for inviting me, for refreshing always uh, my mind and my thoughts on our main uh, topic. And uh, uh, and uh, I will be happy to, to exchange with you anytime. Perfect. Thank you very much. A pleasure. And please come for the last of the closing session. With Ken Cloak, and let's see, because his words of wisdom are really, of course, important. So, so thank you very much, Alexandra, and I'll thank and you. I'll see you soon. Thank you.